Um, we're going to be going to the book of Colossians uh, this evening, Colossians 2 and 3. But while you're, you're looking there, I, I gave out some notes. I don't know if we had enough for everybody, but we've been looking on Sunday nights at uh, convictions, areas of conviction. And I, I know these are not necessarily how you might phrase it or the things that you would choose, but basically it's just the, uh, the belief that, that God speaks and we need to listen and we need to have a, a conviction about how we live or convictions. The one tonight, this will be our last one in the series, my affection must be set on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, if you know your Bible, you know that that's found in Colossians chapter 3, but uh, my affections must be set on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, an affection is, uh, is what you value. It's what you regard, what you think. An old-fashioned way to express it would be what you mind. What you mind. And that, that comes up quite often in Scripture. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 6, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and uh, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And that's pretty much what we're talking about. And we're talking about our affections, what we value. Uh, Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, so that's our, our main verse tonight. I'd like us to go back, though, to Colossians 2 and verse 20 to start. And we're, I'd like to read starting in Colossians 2, 20. And we'll read down through chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians 2.20, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the, the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Well, there's some great uh, truths there as, as you read through that. You know, as you, as you look back at... Uh, uh, for instance, chapter 2, verse 23, he talks about will worship. Man, that's, that's where people are living today. Uh, you know how Jesus said on the cross, not my will, but thine be done? Uh, people today are saying the opposite. Not thy will, but mine be done. You know, will worship. And, uh, you know, we, we have a, a society, and, and it's, it seems to be almost worldwide, where people are saying, I want what I want, and, and that's the right thing. Uh, will worship, what they decide, their will, uh, lives built all around self. Even people who talk about humility nowadays are talking about it selfishly, and uh, they're promoting themselves. Uh, some people believe God if it suits them. Uh, they believe they shouldn't swear unless they really need to. Uh, they believe they shouldn't cheat, cheat unless you really have to. You know what I mean? Uh, they have a idea of a belief, but it's not a conviction. It's will worship. It's what suits them. Living by their affection, uh, as the Lord calls it here, things of the earth. And we need to understand, Christianity is not like religion. Uh, religion's outward. Uh, religion is turned on and off. You know, there's people who go through great ceremonies, and then they go out and commit great crimes. Because it's just religion. It's just a ceremony. Um, Christianity affects your whole life. Christ is to be on the throne of your life. In Colossians 1, at the end of verse 18, he says that in all things, he might have the preeminence. And that's what we're talking about here. My affections must be set on things above, not on things on the earth. We're not looking to uh, worship our will. Uh, we're, we're looking to worship the Lord. And I want to give you three things from this passage that will affect your affections. The first is to seek the heavenly. The second is to slay the earthly. You'll see why we use that word. And thirdly, to strengthen the Christly. I looked up that word Christly. It is a word, all right? Uh, 
Chapter 3 there, in verses 1 through 4, he says, if you then be risen with Christ. That's talking about if you're saved. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, been made alive spiritually, seek those things which are above. And that's what we're talking about here. Uh, if we're going to um, get our affection off of the things of the earth, we have to seek the things that are above. We have to actively seek to be like the Lord. Not just the things of Christ, but Christ himself. Uh, you know, there are some things that will show what your affections are, uh, how you spend your time, uh, what you think about, how you spend your money. You know, we read in Matthew 6, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You can tell a lot about your heart, your affections, by how you spend your time and money and, and your thought life. Um, seeking heavenly things. I, we're not going to spend a, a lot of time here because the whole scripture is about God's standards and how, uh, you know, what, the way God wants us to live. But, you know, in our choices, in our, in our actions, uh, we need to be seeking the heavenly. And one of the ways you can see God's values is God's crowns. You know, in the Bible, he talks about different crowns that he's going to give. Uh, Matthew 6.33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When we think about our lives as being citizens of heaven, being citizens of God's kingdom. In, in this kingdom, Australia, or in England, or America, you know, they're, they're always giving out awards for things. A knighthood, or I don't know all the names of them. And they give them, they give them for some of the most ridiculous things. They give them to for some pretty ridiculous people, too. Uh, but, you know, the Lord is going to give awards when we get to heaven. And he tells us about at least some of them. I don't know if he tells us all of them. He talks about the crown of life. That's basically for the person who endures temptation. You know, we're all tempted. There's no sin in being tempted. What's the old saying? You, you can't stop the birds flying over your head. You can't stop them making a nest in your hair. <laughs> all right? You know, temptations are going to come. And God says there's a crown for those who resist temptation. That's uh, seeking the heavenly. You know, there's going to be times you're going to be tempted to do things that you know are wrong. You know the Bible says you shouldn't do it. Well, endure. Uh, seek the heavenly. Uh, there's the crown incorruptible. Basically, it's a, it's a crown for self-control instead of being out of control. The crown of rejoicing is the soul winner's crown. God says that's, that's valuable. That's seeking the heavenly is to be aware of the souls uh, around you. Uh, the crown of righteousness, he says, is loving his appearing. You know, not just being tied to this earth, but being, man, ready to, ready to go at a, at a moment's notice. Uh, we need to seek heavenly things in our choices and in our actions. But we also need to seek heavenly things in our thinking. In our thinking, it, it's almost like a secret little world that we think nobody knows about. But let me tell you, God knows. God knows all of our thoughts. And, and let me say this, He loves us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> God knows all the secret things we do and all of our, our thoughts and so on, but uh, we need to be pointing our thoughts towards the Lord. Uh, verse 2 is, is one of the reasons I would say this. He says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh, one, part of the definition of an affection is what you, you think, how you think, what you value. In... Um, Romans chapter 8 and, and verse 5, it's, it's the, the same word where he says, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. See, that's, they, they value the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So we need to set our thinking on, on things above. Philippians 2, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We need our, our thinking to be uh, pointed toward the Lord. Seeking Christ. There's a, some verses in Philippians chapter 4. I'll just read one of them. Philippians 4 verse 8. This is one of those verses it's hard to read because it's a list of things. But it's a great verse. I'd encourage you to memorize it. Now, this is where I preached from this morning. and We stopped right, right before this verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And what God is saying there is, you decide what you're going to think about. 
Don't think your brain is some enemy in, inside you. <laughs> it's you, <laughs> and you decide what you think about. Uh, there's times when it's hard to get your mind off of something else, and it, it's just very plain and simple. To quit thinking about one thing, you've got to start thinking about another. And you need to start thinking about the Lord. Start thinking about heavenly things. Uh, there's times, I, I, I know what you've experienced as I have, there's times when the oppressor comes and, and wants to afflict you in your thinking. If you've experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But God is greater. Greater is he that's in you than, than he that's in the world. God wants us to seek the heavenly. It, we do it with, with our, 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 what we value, our affections. We also do it, uh, verse 3 of Colossians 3, 3 and 4, as we think about our position in Christ. He says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That's an amazing picture there. You died in, when you got saved. You died to self. You died to the old way of life. And God made you new. And he says, and your life, that's your new life, is hid with Christ in God. Man, that's, uh, that's double security, isn't it? Maybe triple, I don't know. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You need to think about that. You know, as, as you're afflicted by this world, uh, don't just let it carry you away. Uh, remember uh, that uh, you can have the mind of Christ and, and you've, you've died to sin. You're, you're alive in Christ. In the past, we were dead to Christ. But in the present, if you're saved, you're, you're alive to God. That's what he's talking about there in, in verse 3. And in the future, you'll be with him in glory. You know, no matter how bad this life gets, we talked about that this morning, you know, it, it'll soon be over. Uh, someday we'll, we'll be in eternity with the Lord, um, with Him in glory. We have hope. The Bible says we're not our own, and God is going to take us to be with Him. So number one is seek the heavenly. Seek the heavenly. Uh, my affections must be set on things above, not on things on the earth. The second is there in verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. That word mortify means put to death. It doesn't mean embarrass. <laughs> it means put to death. And when he's talking about your members, he's not, he's not saying that pastors go and kill all your church members. All right? He's not saying cut off your arms and, uh, arms and legs. He's just talking about the things that make up you. That's your, that's your members. Um, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Now that's very negative, isn't it? Boy, this, this Paul, he's, he's a negative fellow. But you know, positive and negative are both necessary, aren't they? You try and start your car without positive and negative. It won't work. <laughs> You've got to have both. And Paul was not only negative, he was also very specific. Let me read it to you. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. The Bible is so polite in how it says things, isn't it? <laughs> These are some really bad stuff. <laughs> but they sound, they sound all right. Covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in which all, ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. You know, before we were saved, uh, many of us had sinful lives. And just, that was just the, the normal way to live. And uh, these are sensual sins. Fornication is sexual immorality. Uh, uncleanness is, uh, I looked this up, it's impurity connected to luxury and loose living. That sounds like most people's goal today. <laughs> Impurity connected to luxury and loose living. Inordinate affection. Inordinate means unregulated. So that's when you take your affections and you, you let them get out of control. It can be something as simple as your appetite. God has given you an appetite. If you don't regulate it, you're a glutton. Uh, or uh, sexuality. God gives us sexuality. If you don't regulate it, uh, he has other things, fornication and immorality. Um, even work. You know, God gives us the desire to work. If you don't regulate it, uh, it'll get out of control. It'll be an inordinate affection. He, he uses the term then, evil concupiscence. It just means wicked cravings. Uh, covetousness. It, we all know about covetousness. It means always wanting more. And God says that's idolatry. When God is not enough. Always wanting more. Always wanting something else. And, and the problem with these sins is they lead to other sins. You know, you don't just have one sin. Sin is not isolated. 
it, it, it increases. And in verse 6, he says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Sin also had, it has its consequences. One is God's judgment. But you know, sin also has its consequences in this life. Uh, there's people who, you know, because they've given themselves to sin, they have certain consequences. Now, God can work with those. You get saved and, uh, you, you know, there, there's things God will do and he'll, uh, he can bless even through that. But that's not the way we want to live as Christians. We don't want to say, Lord, I'm going to mess this up and just see how, how good a job you can make of it then. No. We want to cooperate with the Lord. Slay the earthly. First, we seek the heavenly. But he also tells us to slay the earthly. He goes on. <laughs> There's no end to all these sins. Verse 8. But now you also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You know, you might say, oh, I'm not into those other sins. Well, listen, he's going to hit us with another list here. Lie not one to another, seeing that you've put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that, that created him. You might say these are more social sins. I, I'm not sure if that's a good label or not, but you know, anger, God says, is a sin. Wrath, that's outbursts of anger. You, know, you see that? You see it in public now. What do they call it? Road rage and all these different things. You know, guys my age are out there trying to have fist fights, and you think, what in the world? You know, it's just the, their affections are coming out. What they value is coming out. Who they are is coming out. Malice. Uh, someone has described malice as congealed anger. <laughs> Sarcasm is a good, good illustration of, of malice. Blasphemy, that's speech that slanders God or man. Filthy communication. I'm, I'm hearing more and more of that. You know, people, you, you look at somebody, some lovely man or woman, and, and this rubbish will come out of their mouth. Some low uh, words, sometimes name calling or crude things and so on. Now, we understand lies, as he talks about there in, in verse 9. And the picture he's putting here is of a person changing their clothes. He says, you put off the one, you put on the other. Uh, put off, he says there in verse 8, all of these, anger, wrath, so on. Uh, verse, verse 9, that you've put off the old man. Verse 10, and have put on the new man. You know, put off, put on. There's things that we need to get rid of. Slay the earthly. Uh, there's things we need to, to gain. You know, seek the heavenly. In Christ, we're able to do that. You're not a slave to sin anymore when you, when you trust Christ as your Savior. But you know, just like changing clothes, it takes a conscious effort. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't happen by magic. You decide, I'm going to change my clothes. You go in and change your clothes. And you'll find it's, it's better if you take off the old clothes before you put on the new ones. They'll fit better. And it's the same in the spiritual world. Put off those things that God says to put off. Put on the other. The third area is to strengthen the Christly. Verses 10 and 11, he says, And I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. In verse 10, he uses the word renewed which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That word is a, is a constant process. God is, is constantly at work in your life as a Christian. God never gives up on you. Um, he's always working to make you what you should be in him. It made me think, I, I don't know if you've ever remember your classes in high school uh, about your bones. It, your bones are constantly being torn down and built up. Did you know that? You have cells. I think they're called osteoclasts and osteoblasts. That doesn't make any difference. But if those aren't working, there's some that have to kind of tear it down. There's others that build it up. Constant process. If that doesn't happen, your bones won't work. And it's the same in our Christian life. There's constantly putting off, putting on. You'll never in this life reach perfection. Only you're perfect in Christ, but in our actions and in our affections and so on. God is always at work. And he's gracious. I, that's what I find. You know, you think, oh, Lord, how can I ever conquer this thing? And then he helps you. And then he, he graciously points out the next thing. <laughs> you know, he doesn't lay it all on you at once necessarily. Uh, but God is great. And we need to strengthen the Christly. 
Now, originally, we were formed in God's image. Adam and Eve. God looked and it, it was good. But then we were deformed by sin. You know, people often ask, you know, if there's a good God, why is there sin? You know, why is there sickness and, and disease and so on? Well, all you have to do is read Genesis chapter 3, and you'll see it's the consequences of our sin. We've been deformed by sin. But in Christ, we're transformed. Christ makes us new. He's the, the Bible calls him the second Adam. I always love that at Christmas, how we sing about the second Adam from above. Reinstate us in thy love. Uh, that's exactly who Christ is. And let me tell you, the second Adam, the Bible has a pattern. The second one's always better than the first. Sorry, second. Sorry, first children. But uh, uh, the second Adam is better than the first Adam. First Adam got us into sin. Second Adam offers us a way out. It's Christ, uh, the Lord of glory. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, he says, We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And as we look to Jesus, as we strengthen the Christly, he'll change us. He'll help us to be like him. Uh, we're becoming like Christ. You know, we died with Christ. We need to slay the earthly. We're alive in Christ. We need to seek the heavenly. And we're becoming like Christ. We need to strengthen the Christly. It, it, there again in Colossians chapter 3, he, he talks more about this subject of what to put on. Let me read starting in verse 12. It, it's a lovely description he gives of us here. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. That's us. We're the elect of God, holy and beloved. He says, put on bowels of mercies. That, that just means, I've written this in my Bible, heart of compassion. It's not a phrase we use a whole lot, do we? But it's a lovely, lovely expression to have a heart of compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any ha man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. See, that's putting on the Christly. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Boy, there's a whole list of great things there, isn't it? The Christly things that we need to be uh, incorporating in our lives. We need to practice Christ-likeness in real life. Now, I think sometimes we fool ourselves by thinking that because we know what's in the Bible, that it's true of our own life. You know, we understand the concept, but it's more than just head knowledge. It's reality. We need to be living the things of Christ. And we need to let his word change us. Look at verse 16 there in Colossians 3. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Uh, we need to let God's Word change us. And what a blessing it is to know that, that He knows us and loves us and is working in us, that He'll never give up on us. Uh, like we read in Colossians 1.18, that in all things He might have the preeminence. Like we read in Colossians 3.1, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh, we need to have convictions. He, he says in Matthew 6, 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, we need to have the conviction that our affections need to be set on things above, not on things on the earth. We often quote the verse, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world? Listen, if your affections are on the earth, you might be very successful. You might get all the things you want. But then in the judgment, what will that mean? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You say, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm saying I'll just go after the affections since I'm already saved. Uh, that doesn't make sense either. You know, why would we live for this? world if we're living for eternity. Uh, it, it, you can't take it with you. He, he starts the chapter there, if you then be risen with Christ. And I would ask you tonight, are you risen with Christ? Are you saved? Do you have the life of Christ in, in you? 
In the Bible, Jesus called it being born again. You must be born again. I encourage you tonight, make sure of that. Uh, don't set your affection on things of the earth. You can get all the things your mind thinks you need, and you still wouldn't have what you really need. What you really need is Christ. Who are you trusting? What are you trusting? Are you trusting self or, or Christ? Are you trusting this earth or the things which are above? I encourage you tonight to, uh, to see what the Lord is, is teaching here. And uh, have this, this conviction. My affections must be set on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh, seek the heavenly, slay the earthly, strengthen the Christly. God will, will help you to do that. We're going to take our song.